October, the month where we draw pretty boys. <laughs> Every day of October, I will draw a pretty boy using this prompt list here. I made it months ago while being tired in the middle of the night, so some prompts do not make any sense. Some prompts are even boring, but tonight, they're all gonna be pretty. Berry. The first prompt of every year's list is always the thing that is depicted in the logo, except for the first one. I did a leaf because fall, I think, I don't know. Uh, this year, I did a little strawberries. So to match that, the first prompt is berry. For this year, I'm using a bigger brush than I normally use. It's still the same liner brush I always use, so here are the settings for that brush on screen right now. However, I did double it in size. Normally, I use a 6 pixel brush on a 3000 by 3000 pixel canvas. This time, I used a 12 pixel brush on a 1500 by 2000 pixel canvas. So it's much more sketchy than I usually do. This way, I can make everything faster. It ends up not looking as sketchy since colors help a ton, but this is much rougher than my usual work. And it was very nice to not push myself to make it very perfect. I'm not very precise with anything in my life except for my art, and I knew that if I would do that again here, it would take a very long time, or at least too long for my liking. I want each drawing to be a random character's design, since that's what I like doing most. And for Barry, I went with the most obvious route. A strawberry hat. Someone wearing a strawberry hat is bound to look like the queen herself, strawberry shortcake, and I will take any comparison to her as a compliment. I just went for a cheeky boy, cheeky happy boy, I guess. There's honestly not much personality in this guy other than his fun hat and his expression. Uh, the clothes, they don't do anything for me <laughs> at all, except again for the hat, but the clothes, meh. Uh, it is the first one, and for me that's always when I try to experiment the most. Each year for this challenge, I try to do something a bit different from my usual technique, you know, to keep it interesting. And this time I want to try out, next to figure lines, shading with a water fringe. It's simply a layer effect in Paint to Sigh, which creates a small outline on the thing you are drawing. It will always be a darker version of the color outlines, uh, making it different from adding an outline, which is also a thing you can do in Paint to Sigh, and I'm pretty sure in other programs as well. Uh, here you can actually change the color to whatever you want. Water fringe is is sad. You cannot change it. It's, it's sad. For the colors, I did the same thing as I did with previous years. Last year, for some reason, uh, I used the colors of the logo. I always see the first guy as kind of like the mascot of the Pretty Boy Tober list, kind of. <laughs> uh, I actually did do a try out for a previous year. Uh, and there I did use the colors of the logo. But it took too long, and I knew I was going to be busy that month, so I scrapped it and went for very rough sketches. I, I did like just six of them. <laughs> Not a good year. Uh, but I actually used the water fringe in that drawing too, and I wanted to try it out again this year. For that drawing, I only used it on the hair though. You know, here it's just the shading. But you will see later on, I would will also be adding it on the hair. But that's later, because he's here wearing a hat, you cannot see his hair. So, but that will come later, a little spoiler for you. <laughs> and there we have our very first drawing. That was really fun. So let's go to the next one because we do not have all day. Dreamy. I want to have prompts that can be interpreted differently for anyone. You could make a guy that's absolute dreamboat or what I went with, a sleepy guy. The sketch brush I am using is the same I always use as well. I'm pretty sure it's a standard marker that comes with paint to side, but I'm not sure. So just in case, here are the settings on screen as well for the sketch brush. My sketches are always very rough, mostly because I'm just impatient and want to get to the next step, which is line art. Yay! <laughs> Especially with these thicker lines, I usually treat this as like a sort of second sketch phase. That's why my sketches are pretty different from the line art. Whenever I do a commission for people, however, I do actually do a second sketch phase to send over to the customer so they can have a better idea of what a drawing will look like. I don't expect them to be able to read my messy sketches. 
Sketching in a messy way helps me to sometimes come up with part of the design. If I accidentally make a certain shape with my brush, it can give me an idea. The same happened here when I made the jacket. I made it too poofy. Not like that's actually possible. Something can never be too poofy, let's be real. But because of this, I thought of clouds. And so I gave him cloud earrings as well. Together with a cloud jacket. I think clouds are pretty dreamlike. In my language, a thought bubble is called a thought cloud. So that's kind of like dreaming, right? It can be used for both daydreaming and usual common dreaming, like sleep dreaming. I gave the clouds both a blue and a pink shading and then a yellow highlight. It made a boring white more lively, in my opinion. I was going for that wonky material poofy jackets are made of. I kind of for the life of me recall the name. Not even my native language, but you get what I mean, right? Like, like it's kind of shiny and has more colors than it should. It doesn't really matter because it doesn't really look like it anyway, but it's fine, it's fine. I told myself to sometimes just let it rest for these drawings. Sometimes when I am not satisfied, I tend to redo stuff, but not this time. I just, I just went with it, I just went with it. And even though it may not have the effect I wanted to, it just creates some nice effect and I am happy with it. I wanted to try the water fringe on the hair highlights as well here. Uh, previous drawing, the hair was barely visible due to the hat. Again, but now it's on full display, so I added a new layer on top of the line art. On top of everything else, I made a highlight with water fringe turned on. And after that, I included some sparkles, of course. And here is the second boy for this month. Before going to the next guy, let me take a quick break to thank my Patreons. Uh, they help out more than anything, they really do. I really appreciate them. Uh, you can see all those lovely peeps on screen now. Uh, special thanks to my top supporters on the $5 tier. Uh, Akia Fox, Ichiwo, Steely McWheelie, Kira, Lady Helio, Rainy Fay, Shell Puppy, and Megan McCabe. Thank you so much. On my Patreon, I share all my art, including the ones not on social media. It's mostly just a glorified tip jar, and I appreciate anyone who wants to donate, I really do. A uh, link to my Patreon is in the description if you're interested, but support can also come in different ways. If you want to support me here, you can just subscribe, like, comment, all that. It's free, and it helps a ton, it really does. So, now let's go to the next boy. We want to see more pretty boys. Mystery. I love mysteries, whether it's a movie, true crime, or a game. I love mysteries, and especially to solve them, or, or them being solved. I'm not going out solving crime mysteries, don't worry. My first idea for this prompt was maybe doing a detective. Like, that's a classic mystery guy. Uh, but yeah, didn't feel that as much. You know, I, don't, I didn't really know what to do <laughs> with this prompt. Uh, again, I made these prompts in the middle of the night. Uh, I was kind of tired and I thought to myself, okay, this is the perfect time to make prompts so I don't give myself ideas already. And it was like a few months ago, so I didn't know anymore. And I came up with mystery in the middle of the night, apparently. Great. <laughs> so I didn't go for a detective, as you can see. I settled on a guy himself being a mystery. Someone that makes you think, ooh, who, who is that? Ooh. <laughs> I want his face to be all covered, only showing his eyes. I mean, what's more mysterious than that, right? I was thinking of that one scene from Aladdin where Jasmine is disguised on a market. Ooh. She's not covered as much as this guy here and was not dressed as fancy to not attract any attention, but still, that, that, that's where my thoughts went. I make up their stories as I go, if you can call them stories, not really stories, just kind of like having to have the guy do something, I guess. This guy's probably someone fancy and needs to hide, ooh. Or maybe he's a criminal. I don't I don't have any plans for these characters, honestly. <laughs> I will probably sell them next month or so, so keep an eye on that. Uh, but I would love to hear what kind of story you get from these guys, you know, ooh. What do you think he's hiding, hmm? Where did he come from? Where did he go? He's giving like strong desert vibes to me, you know, or it's very sunny, but also he's covered. Ooh, and I feel like he would have a camel. A camel just as fancy. Who knows? I, I didn't make him that fancy, by the way. As you can see, 
I, I gave him like fingerless gloss with a kind of ooh torn <laughs> to dim down the fanciness a bit. <laughs> it didn't help, he's still way too fancy. The great thing about this challenge is that anyone can join. <laughs> it, it would be weird if this was like exclusively for me, that would be dumb. Uh, and with that, you can you get to see everyone's interpretation of the prompt. If you look at hashtag Pretty Boy Tumblr on Instagram or Tumblr, I think pretty much as well, uh, you can see other people drawing Pretty Boy too. It's really cool. So check it out. Check it out. You should do it. Uh, I upload my boys every day on there as well on Instagram, but also on Tumblr and um, all my other social media as Demon Art, Twitter even, or is it called X nowadays? I have no idea. I have no idea if that's just a logo or its actual name. I don't care enough about Twitter, honestly. <laughs> I never did. But I am uploading it there as well. Oh, I'm so nice. <laughs> oh, it's dumb. Uh, but all my social, e social medias are linked in the description if you want to see my drawings every day when they come out. I'll also upload them uh, as a community post here on YouTube. But those are like very easy to miss. So I don't blame you if you didn't saw them there. And here we have our mystery guy. Here he is. Bum, ba, ba, Let's go to the next prompt. Majesty. I always sneak in a royal design in this list. Always. First year was Prince Boy, second year was Royal, last year was Crown, and this year it's Majesty. <laughs> I love designing characters that are royal. It's a great excuse to make them over the top, you know? And it's not a Luigi design if I don't add gold accents. I mean, I love gold, I love Jubilee, I love princes, I love kings. This is a very selfish list. So I was excited for the ma majesty prompt. I feel like this is a prompt where I got more into the whole designing part. Last three were fine, but they weren't really my favorite designs. But here, I went all out. And I think the personality was on full display as well. At least better than my previous ones. I still think I can use some practice on expressions to make them express more, but it's better than the previous ones. Since one of my own characters I draw a lot is like a humble royal, I like to go opposite with these and make a snobby royal. Did that the first other two years as well. I want to give him a big crown, like very big, like those ones that are almost like a helmet with fabric and all like, ooh, I like those. They're really cool. I like those and I really want to draw that. With character desires, it helped me to make the character either have a hobby or an occupation, you know, or to give them a more specific theme. The theme here is, of course, majesty, but I wanted something more specific. And when I think of a king, I also think of chess. I love playing chess, actually. I really do. Uh, one of my favorite movies growing up was about a girl who was transported to a world where her chess pieces were living, and it taught me how to play chess. It was really cool. I loved it. Of course, also... With help from my dad, like the movie wasn't as good as explaining the whole game to me, but my dad helped. But it was because of that movie. Uh, I could already like play chess when I was like six or seven or something because of that movie. I wanted to play chess so badly. I mostly played against my twin sister, so it weren't really good matches, but I did enjoy it and I think it's a very cool game. So I went for that. I went for a chess king. However, instead of doing just like the black or the white king, I kind of did both, kind of. Uh, yeah, so it's not an actual chess king, since I am using both black and white, but that's how I, my thought process went, you know. <laughs> I even had like a chess pattern on his sleeves to make it even more in your face. <laughs> if I would ever do a full body design, I may add more black so he could be the actual black chess king and maybe design a white king as well with black accents, but that's just my creative mind going wild you know i love the idea of it don't know if i will actually have the motivation to do it that's always my downfall like coming up with the idea got you let's go actually doing it yeah but here we have our fourth boy of this video and now let's go to the next one which will also be the last bunny and the last from for today's video is bunny at first, I played around with a guy with just like bunny ears, which I always liked, you know. It's always fun. I like animal ears on human designs, actually. I think they're you know, whimsical. I like them. But I quickly got a more specific idea, a more specific theme, like I talked about, previous drawing. Uh oh, 
putting things together, nice. <laughs> I made two designs, the very first Pretty Boytober, and I was a tiger and a dragon, and I made them represent the Chinese zodiac. And I realized while drawing the bunny guy here, that there's also a Chinese rabbit zodiac. So I wanted this design to fit in with the other two. Now the other two are more regal, while this guy is more like a cute little dude, but I do think he fits. Yeah. I love hats. I think hats are very cool and they add so much in the design, I just love them. Except for little hats, I hate little hats. Like cover the hat or something, like bleh. That's just a very big hair clip, not a hat. You know, it's just hot take, but I, uh, I don't like little hats. I like big hats. So I gave this guy an actual hat, a big hat, a normal hat. I looked up some Chinese hats, not that my designs are very like historical accurate, my designs for the zodiac, Chinese zodiac, but I did look it up, you know, I, did, I did do something. <laughs> I found similar hats like the ones I'm drawing now, and I really like the shape of them, like it's like a sturdy beanie, I really liked it, so I gave him that hat. I recently got the updated version of Pizzle Side 2, and it came with a symmetry tool, and I've been using that boy for so many things lately. Ooh, I love it. I love it. You will see me using it for the pattern on this guy's outfit and for like the little bows. It's such a nice tool. I've been using it for making patterns, but also for like a full on design. I've been doing a lot of adoptables lately and all with this beauty of a tool. I love it. It's just the best from the front view. It's such like an easy way to quickly make a design. I, I really recommend it. I honestly do. I also made a base, by the way, free to use. I will link it in the description as well, you know, come on. Uh, it's a female bay, so it's not really on theme for this pretty boy video, but maybe I'll make a male one soon enough, who knows, but uh, the female one is linked in the description, free to use for anything, do whatever you want with it. A little guilty pleasure of mine in character designs when the skin and hair are very similar in color. I know it's not a very good design tip, it would be maybe a bit unreadable, <laughs> but something about it just it's just so fun to me, I don't know. Since I color the eyelashes and eyebrows the same color, well, usually I do it, not always, but usually I do, it creates like a softer face, I think. I just really like it, I don't know. Uh, it would not be a good design if it had to be drawn with like no line art and all that. The, the lines, they help a ton. They do help a ton. <laughs> but something about it, it's just, mwah, it's just so good to me. So for this guy, I did that as well, and since it just blends in with one another, the outfit stands out a bit more, in my opinion. So, to really make it different from the skin and hair, I made it like a green-blue outfit. To really make it pop. It does have a darker pink accents to tie it in with the hair and skin again, and... Uh, I don't know, I like, I like his color scheme, I like it. Oh, it's um, it's simply the Chinese sign for a rabbit on his hat, by the way. A bunny and a rabbit are the same thing, right? <laughs> I, honest, I honestly don't even know. <laughs> I should do research before making these. Damn. But here is our fifth and final boy of this episode. Which one was your favorite? You know? And uh, did you participate as well? And which one was the most fun to draw? I, I would love to hear your thoughts, really. Uh, comment them below. Love to hear them. Uh, and these are were the first five. Next video will be the next five, naturally. And those will feature the prompts Party, City, Sunny, Envy, and Story. And I hope to see you there. Have a very nice day. Thanks for watching. And, you know, draw a pretty boy. Why not? <laughs>